Well, hello, THL. We're back again. It's been a while for a stream on a Tuesday, but here we are. We have a Hero Series match uh, that we're going to show. So it's uh, going to be a wonderful series between Super Chicken and Always Just in Time. Um, but I'd like to introduce our casters for this evening. We have uh, Righteous Jammies. Thanks for joining us. Hey, hey. It is not a problem. Got it. And we got uh, just from Hire Center, hot, fresh off the the, the presses at at the Hire Center, Wild Nine. Welcome back. Hey, how's it going? Not bad, not bad. Are we ready for this match? It's going to kick off the uh, the playoff season between these two giants in Hero Series. Yeah, I'm excited. You know, Tuesday night is nice because or. Tuesday night Hearthstone probably means it's playoffs, I feel like. <laughs> so, always a good sign. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also very excited for this playoffs match. Uh, we will see how it goes. Yeah, this is the two seed in the Heroes Hero playoffs. I was going to say, yeah, semifinals, because it's only four teams that made it, right? So, yeah. Yes. Uh, two seeds. And, uh, yeah, don't know if Saku wants us to jump into the class breakdown or... Uh... Oh, yeah. Well, I do have bands in it. It's, uh, just double-checking this, but it is... Oh, <laughs> that's kind of important. Yeah. So, Chicken Band Priest. Thank you. And Justin Band Priest. So, the okay. matchup we wanted to avoid, uh, a 24-hour stream... Um, for priest only is avoided well you know there's still blood dk so <laughs> i'm still in the mix but uh when i when i was looking at the classes too i, I kind of thought most likely as a double priest ban um just because if you don't ban the priest you're kind of locked into a relic dh or something like that and then uh that makes other things complicated so Priest ban definitely makes sense, but uh, and both people could, if they want a slower deck, can bring um, a blood DK to fill that role if they want. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. Just matchup wise, it makes a lot of sense to ban the priest here for both lineups. Um, for let them cook with super chicken specifically, though. Um, seeing as actually, I'll wait for the class breakdown. <laughs> Sorry, getting ahead of myself. 
Yeah. I mean, um, I just think uh, it, it'll be interesting in the hero format. Um, I think that the banning of the priest also allows you to run out cast DH and maybe you'd run that out first just because it's good against most things basically. Um, but blood decay is probably the answer to outcast DH. And then from there, um, this is why I was just kind of looking at, by looking at the classes, I did kind of think that super chicken might have an edge. Um, but we'll see. Cause I, I do think that I kind of like where the DK is at in particular against the, uh, Justin's classes, but we'll see. All right. I'm going to get the players to, to start now. So we'll see what happens. Expected, uh, decks. There's classes to start by, uh, geranium, geranium, Jesus, righteous jammies. <laughs> I had the uh, heart yeah, center in the brain there um, for a quick sec, so. Yeah, I get you. I think Justin's going to open Rogue and Chicken's going to open Demon Hunter. I'm going to go and say it's double Demon Hunter, but yeah, I think that Rogue's possible, especially if it's Miracle. I think Miracle is, always has a chance against basically everything and allows you to save the DH for later, so that'd be an interesting line for sure. All right, so for our viewers, uh, always just in time is going to be the first to spectate for our casters. At the, for, the, for your viewers, it's going to be at the bottom of the screen with Super Chicken at the top of your screen. So let's see what they bring. Just waiting for some eyeballs to kick in. I've not played that much on – well, I haven't played – I'm not playing here this season, so – I feel like uh, it is one of the ones that's just very interesting in terms of counter classes and uh, how you decide to um, schedule your lineup, essentially. Yeah. Um, for those viewers that don't know what uh, last year's standing is all about, uh, you want to help describe that? The format. Uh, sure. sure. I'll, Go ahead, Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Last year's standing is... Oh, double deep hunter opener. Sorry. Um, so last year of standing is where you you bring one class. If that class wins, you continue playing that class. If that class loses, that class is eliminated from your lineup. Uh, first to three wins, bring four, ban one, and that's the series. It does look like we have an outcast mirror. And interesting that Justin keeps the Feller in, in the hand. I do you think in this uh, matchup, as I'm sure he's assuming that this is gonna this is a mirror, just by the fact that it came out first, um, that that is a high win rate card basically to have near Mulligan. Yeah, um, Justin spending some time here thinking about whether to weave or to Illidari studies. Um, not sure. I don't know. It, it's, it's a, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no worries. I, I like the Ladaris on two, generally speaking. Uh, but now he's yeah. kind of thinking probably because he could hear a power of this one, one. The reason why the Ladari on two is nice is because of spectral sight. Um, rather than putting on a one, if you get spectral sight and you choose it, it gets lost, right? And so that becomes, I mean, you know, you can't play it in that turn, you get stuck behind Steph, so. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. Taking the Fierce Outrider here off of the Illidari studies, it was uh, a choice of I-Beam, Illidari study, I-Beam, Outsider, and the Return to Hand leaving in the hero power and leaving the fierce outrider in hand, not choosing to play it for tempo or on board. Especially with the Hawk Shredder Rangers in hand, it does make wow. a lot of sense though to save it. Very nice top deck for, for Justin there, um, getting it to play this, this uh, Hawk Shredder so that still gets the bonus from the uh, fierce outsider. This was actually a decision point, I feel like, for Chicken. Um, maybe the top deck was kind of the response. And I guess that does make sense. Could have thought about coining a 4-drop just because maybe it makes the curve a little bit smoother. But I do think like getting that rush and then seeing the Hawk Strider, you want to kill it as soon as possible. And so this makes a lot of sense. 
Yeah, uh, I definitely agree with you there. Just getting the Hawk Strider Ranger off board as soon as you can is definitely a uh, top priority. Yeah, I think, I mean, Super Chicken has four cards, all costing four mana now in his hand. Uh, so just wants to start putting these, uh, getting these out of his hand. Um, I expect the Glaive to come down still, probably, but uh, you could go with Falarin. There's definitely value to that as well. Just feels like with yeah. both weapons in hand, you, you just kind of want to get one out so that you know you can have a smoother curve maybe later on. Yeah, for sure. Especially with uh, like you definitely want to, at least in my opinion, you want to get the weapon out before the feller in. You know, so that way if you do have something that's tending you, you don't waste the outcast in the other slot. If you want to save it for your glaive tar. Yeah. Um, Justin's got a lot of really good plays. Could put a, another Hawk Strider board on. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking, though, I, I don't know. I think here it's probably just to draw first. The question is whether or not you want to just flat out draw or if you want to rush the stage. Um, I, I would probably say just a spectral sight. Yeah. So you can just draw without having to waste as much mana as three because if you do draw low cost minions you're going to want a hawk strider rancher oh interesting um, i so... think the line here would yeah i think the no, line go ahead. here is just the rancher yeah rancher miracula hero power and uh ping it off instead opting for the ladari studies instead of hero power he knows that he can always kill this 3-1 if he needs to with the Rush Minion. I think he was looking possibly for a 1-drop to charge in, but didn't, didn't find that. Gotcha, gotcha. Wow, playing the Tempo Exile. Um, basically just looking for uh, ways to clear this board off. And hoping to yeah, just getting it, enough value. It, yeah, I don't think that's realistically very likely, if I'm being honest, with uh, current board state and the current hand state uh, from Super Chicken. It's an interesting read um, because be to... I think part of the read is like, you know you're going to basically draw your deck there. Um, and so maybe the idea here is we don't really need much more value from this exile. We just want to put it on the board so that you have minions and to kind of contest and push back against your opponent. This is scary, though, because of um, he had seen the rest of the stage. So Halveria does have the potential to do scary things, as we're potentially about to see. Yeah, with the uh, Halveria, it would be another 9 damage that you can push face. Um, if you chose to, you would probably clear off uh, your opponent's Wretched Exile with your Rushers and just swing face and uh, maybe even get another 12 face if, if you do choose to swing in your hub area with the security. Or you can just play security and rush the stage. Uh, that way you can hopefully save up a little bit for next turn. And that is what Justin opts to do. To yeah, he's going to get a very scary board of stuff here um yeah, and basically put lethal since... on the board yeah i definitely agree with you there um especially seeing as the well everything well the, the right three most minions all have rush and uh it's a uh it's a aura at this point so now it's it still triggers halveria is what i'm trying to get at I see a Slither Spear coming down from Super Chicken, as well as a Rush the Stage, drawing double Wallopers, which is honestly basically what I think Chicken really needed here. Um, trying to clear off as much of your opponent's Rushers as you can, while ideally making some of your own. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that was a guaranteed draw as well, so um, we'll be able to try to take back this board to some degree, although... This is not the easiest set of trades. Kind of has to preference the rush minions. 
Yeah. Although, with that 5-5, five, five, I don't think that's what's going to happen here. Oh, yeah. maybe. No, I think that's the right the, the right line. It just makes sense. You're not really going to take any more power off the board, even if the 3-3 three, um, the three, three is not a great trade. Yeah, okay. I see that now. Yeah. So that, that is very powerful, sense. though. Like, he still had some kind of lethal... Did he have a lethal out? Actually, I don't think so. I think... Oh, no, he had four minion nerds more. He did still have a lethal out um, with with security. So he was drawing for it. He didn't see it. Don't yeah, think this is lethal. Uh, one, two, three. And then you get... It's close. That's... It's pretty close. What is this? Uh... One, two, three, four. Another four. So it's eight. Plus. Plus three is eleven. Plus what's on the board? Yeah. So I think he was short. Really just like, oh wait, maybe with hero power it is. Yeah, with hero power. It was power, really it was close. Really yeah. Don't try oh, okay. It's definitely. Whoa, no. wait. He missed some damage there. Yeah. Okay, that yeah, was definitely, definitely a mistake. Fun. Yeah, and that would have been lethal too. I think that was lethal, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you would, it would take have been four your, more uh... damage. Yeah, that was lethal. I, I think with the hero power, it was right at the limit there. So he just needed to avoid the. Um, he just needed to not hit the lifesteal minion, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's that, and there's also you had to swing with your. Uh, right. Well, he did. Three one. But the uh, the yeah the three one face. Um. Before the other minions, of course. Yeah, the um, it's either just exactly lethal or it is one. It was one extra with hero power. Yeah, uh, well, one of the two. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, never punished, uh, right? Justin so. getting in. Yeah, Justin, Justin getting in there with his uh, outcast demon hunter. That's a pretty big win in the mirror, as always with Hero. I feel like that when any of you have that first match mirror, I feel like the winner often uh, has that pretty big edge. Forces the person who loses to try to get a win in uh, unfavorable most of the time. Yeah. Um, don't really know what what Chicken brings here in response. Like, maybe... Maybe warrior, I could see that. I'm assuming it's a blood through, decay. If, if it's well, if it's blood decay, then yeah. But if it's anything else, you're not getting through with the DK. Right. Yeah. Then it, then we would if see it is the warrior. Blood DK, I think it's just it. Yeah, I think if it's blood DK, you just instantly cue it though, right? Yeah. I mean, he could also bring frost death knight. That that is another. It has a decent matchup against Outcast DH, um, and it does beat Miracle Rogue. So if it is kind of like a 50-50-ish, maybe he's considering, do I just play their Enrage Warrior? I hope that we get there. Um, or since the Enrage Warrior is not going to... Well, typically it's not going to be... It's not going to have an advantage against Miracle Rogue, at least. Yeah. Um, in that case, yeah, I think just the DK here is the right pick. Uh, and that's what we see. Because uh, if you take one with DK, odds are you're going to either force them to uh, go their D their own DK or uh, have a good chance into the rogue. Yeah, I still think it'll be interesting. I mean, rogue certainly can beat blood DK for sure. Um it's somewhat even, depends obviously on how the rogue is constructed, how it draws. So we'll see how, uh, whether or not it'll end up being some kind of blood mirror, or whether um, they'll just try to take it the rest of the way with the rogue. Yeah, um, and you were, you were absolutely correct in the prediction that it is blood DK, which definitely does make sense into the lineup. So... Uh... Ooh, that is an interesting card to be running. Uh, Demolition Renovator in the Blood DK from Super Chicken. Anti-Rogue. Which means this Blood DK 
will feel fairly comfortable against the rogue. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, um, DH or the outcast demon hunter is going to be pretty unfavored here to the tune of something like 40 or 30 percent, even. Um, this is not an easy matchup just because the blood DK has so many different ways to clear and uh, so many ways to gain life. Yeah, between that and um, I was just looking forward to the next match. If, if the demon hunter doesn't get in here, um, then it probably has to be DK from. Justin next, and if that doesn't do it, then I think it's kind of over. Although that is a very large assumption. <laughs> Astlor coming down here from Super Chicken, not wanting to get the mana thirst, just a uh, tempo on board. Yeah, I think um, this also makes a lot of sense. Uh, not playing anything on one, I mean, I guess he could have coin security just to put three one ones on the board which honestly isn't necessarily wrong in this matchup but this makes a lot of sense it's just to coin out the rancher this is one of the ways you can try to win it's just to get them early enough um kind of assuming it's going to be another rancher but this doesn't have to be you could try to stick in the exile instead yeah i mean yeah i think it's just another rancher here no matter yeah. what the opponent's hand is even even if they do have the Death Strike, I think it's just always right here to double Rancher. Yeah, for sure. I think that um, even if with the Death Strike, at least they're not getting full value off of the Lifesteal. Uh, but yeah, still probably the best play here. And I think here it's definitely just Redship Exile tempo play. And yeah, that's what we see. got some very nice... Um, some very nice outcast cards too. I think you, well, Shambling Chow does give you a little more stats on the board. Although going yeah, wide, I, think I guess you're worried about um, Blood Boil or something. Yeah, but even then, I think you just have to play to your routes and hope that they don't have it and For sure. try and overwhelm them. Yeah, I definitely agree. Just, I mean, I think at this. In this matchup, you're just trying to put as much stats on the board and just hope that they survive. I think the value plan, you'll you'll never really get there with the value plan. Yeah. Um, and ooh, we see a dirty rat coming down from Super Chicken. Uh, fortunately for Justin and unfortunately for Super Chicken, hitting another Wretched Exile. Tons more value coming in. Yeah, for sure. And uh going to be a good turn for Justin. Let's see what kind of cards he gets off of these randoms. Um, you know, the the um, Dirty Brat, though, trying to set up a good corpse explosion, right? So even using the 1-1 one -one to knock some life off of the uh, Wretched Exile. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I had to think about that for a second, and that, that does make sense. Um, my only... No, it's not even that much of a concern. I was thinking it, yeah, Corpse Explosion does almost full clear here, so. Yeah, everything okay. but a 1-1. One, one. Sorry, I was thinking to myself there, yeah. So yeah, that that does seem pretty logical. Yeah, I wanted the I-beam. It's going to overdraw, but honestly, so bad, I don't think you really care that much. Just want to get as much no, damage to the face all. as possible. Uh, between getting a whole bunch of damage face and then also you, uh, you just refilled your hand so much. And even if you don't typically win in value, you might be able to. Just if they don't have any life steal or anything like that in their hand, you might maybe be able to do something with uh, some outcast cards if you just like. Refilled like he just did. Yeah. I think now the challenge is just to figure out how to navigate the hand. Do we play from the left? Do we play from the right? This failure in is awkward when we have a full hand. So playing from the left is very yeah. awkward. I know he wants to get to these Glavesmiths to get some damage in. Honestly, I think I think the right choice here is neither, and you just tempo the stats for the Glavesmiths on board. Yeah. But the Felerin is fine. 
No, I think that you do want to, I mean, at this point, you kind of have to play to what the cards, are, like, the Hearthstone Gods has given you a lot of value. So in some sense, it just feels like, oh, we just have to play, not, not really a value game, you're still playing tempo, but we have to get as much, you know, damage out of these cards value as Value out of our tempo, yeah. I get you. We do have the eye beams to get rid of this without um, letting them have any more knife steal, so that's nice. Oh yeah, you can yeah. also bump bump uh, this. Yeah. Can, yeah, tough crowd. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. This is a good line. Ooh. Yeah. Wow, that is a nice top deck too. Right. Now I don't think Justin will miss the lethal. <laughs> sure. Sure after that one blender he's like, I'm locked in now. <laughs> we got this. Yeah. Um we have to see Soul Stealer here from Oh, it's gonna be a hollow Chicken, hound. It's gonna be or devastating as well. <laughs> oh, hollow hound too, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's actually. huge. He also gets rid of all the rush minions. Yeah. And uh Mermacula. One turn too late. It was other order for the uh, card draws. Maybe a little, little better there. Confusing more like uh, at least a little bit. Yeah, this play from the left line though feels pretty good. Should set him up in the future. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. It's gonna leave the one the one uh, spot open so he doesn't get board locked. Although I think Oof. he could have played Another the Shamrock Tower. Yeah, constantly. I mean, he, 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 you know, it seems like Super Chicken is onto the plan, which is ah, he seems to be trying to set up a board for Halperia, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely where it gets rough. Um, you don't have the Hawks Riders anymore in your deck, so there's not really a chance of that. You're out of Exiles as well. So whatever's in your deck for the most part, that's what you're working with. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot. Yeah. Um, I think you might just have to play Halveria here. I think that he's going to set up another board, see if he has the answer. Yeah. And if he doesn't, know, then... It's... Okay. okay. Yeah. That's, that makes more sense. I, I was about to say, if you just dump your whole hand, then at that point, it's just game over. But the, uh... Yeah, he does have the answer. <laughs> yeah. It's Justin that's going to find out. <laughs> uh, oh, that's, I mean, that gets you back on board if you play Halveria. Uh, it is your win condition, though. But I'm not sure what yeah. else you can do here. I think here it's probably just tempo more Lockula and give up board, <laughs> but I really don't know. But yeah, coming on board too is uh, not not a bad idea at all. <laughs> it's the biggest board he can make. Um, yeah. I think here it's probably just patchwork and your secret that you just got, or secret and uh, ask the lore. But yeah, here's the patchwork. Hitting the Haldaria, which is very unfortunate for Justin, very fortunate for Chicken. Um, and we see Chicken very likely just getting there, especially with the. Uh, uh, card hand difference. Interesting counter spell. I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe uh, I'm not even really sure. <laughs> I guess that everything else wasn't really that relevant. So yeah. Um, I mean, you would counter like rush the stage and spectral sights. But yeah, 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 that's right. I definitely agree with you there that it's uh best option that was given yeah best card those are the best cards definitely left in deck so yeah that makes a lot of sense all right well this is gonna be over fairly soon 
Yep. Or Let's just see. about now. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense to rip the tempo. Uh, makes a lot of sense. But it basically put them on a two turn clock. And top decking rush the stage. Oh. Will not do it. It'll well, survive. He could be alive. Yeah, you'll you'll still be alive, but, but it's not going to get there. It's yeah, what kind of life is this? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Um. Is there uh, did you get the wandering monster? Get... No. All right. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. either explosive or wandering. So. I was thinking if there was something that you could get that would deal the last three damage, like from the top deck. So that way you right. can, you know, muncher and just get it, but, uh, it works too. I would just pick a Asphyxiate and play it, deal your nine chip damage, probably tempo out a Dirty Rat. Just to be extra safe. Yeah. And that is it. That it is. Nothing in the deck helps you here. All right, well, now we see. Sorry, uh, now we see probably what Death Knight uh, Justin's bringing. If not, then Rogue. But Rogue is very likely Miracle. Um, if it isn't, then it's Secrets, and Secrets might be able to get there over the Miracle, just slightly more favored. Um, but it'll probably lose to the Warrior at that point. I do think since he saw a couple of the cards, like he do, he knows that this Death Knight is playing the secret package, he knows that it's playing location destruction, it may um, help Justin decide, like, oh, I probably would rather play the mirror now. Um, cause, yeah, and hope to get in. Yeah, because if the warrior is in Rage Warrior, I mean, I do think that you want the rogue for the warrior anyway. So you might as well try to get that 50 50. Um, and in theory, maybe. Because you're not playing location destruction in your Blood Death Knight, maybe, or assumedly, um, that uh, you <laughs> might have an edge there, right? So you have a couple more high quality cards. Yeah, definitely agree with you there. Hopefully, or not hopefully, depending on what team you are on, uh, you, uh, well, Justin uh, will wind up uh, going for the DK and see what quality cards he's got. All right. Maybe Justin's just resetting himself. Yeah. That, uh... It is going to be a uh, right. mirror. There it is. Yep. And that... Definitely makes sense. Yeah, I think that that's the big question, I guess, in Super Chicken's deck. Like, what did he have to remove to include the secret package and include the location destruction? Uh, we didn't see yeah. the Arcanite Ripper, for example. Did that get removed? Yeah, like, what exactly got removed? Yeah. Yeah, neither neither that list so a... far is playing, or like, we don't have indication of either list being the super greedy ones that run the finale card that you know discovers two spells or things like that but those are some of the cards that would help in the mirror just so that you can outgreed your opponent yeah there's that and then i think that there would also be the uh a case made for the banshee don't know if anyone's been cutting those recently or if they're still right. being played but, um yeah yeah and we see that justin is running a viper so both both people have some tech in their decks here yeah. Um. Wow. Uh. <laughs> this is this is rough from both ends. Less so from Super huh? Chicken's end, but still. The key card for Chicken is that he already has the uh, Morgrain in hand, and yeah. so that's gonna be pretty huge in this matchup. Yeah, Morgrain, um, Vampiric, and Astral are, are all good, but. The uh, concern is if anyone gets ahead on board before the other. 
it is a little interesting there. Um, not sorry, not the two tube. I mean, um, Justin did have the opportunity if he wanted to to go looking for more grain or something by putting down the Finley. Um, I don't know if he's thinking about doing it now. Oh, there it is. Doesn't matter. It was next card. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think Justin's hand is definitely is currently more geared slightly towards late game in comparison to chickens. Uh, this deck doesn't really typically get on board, so Blood Boil is not going to do much. Um, rather go tall than wide, so Asphyxiate is going to do something eventually. Um, yeah. I think it's just taking cold feet here, maybe? You never do. Yeah, Frost Strike might be okay, but I agree. I think Cold Feet's the only thing that's really that relevant. Um, the interesting thing that Justin has open to him is uh, uh, on six, he can coin the more grain to get it down first. As long as um, his opponent doesn't really have a board, he can make it awkward for him to play his own more grain on, the, on curve. Yeah, there's that. And there's also um, if you choose to on turn six, because. That chicken's gonna have the extra mana. You can always save the cold feet if you do wind up taking that. Uh, you can always save the cold feet for turn six, play it then, and then like coin out a no muncher or oh, and it doesn't matter anyways. Didn't take it. <laughs> yeah, frost strike does have more value. I mean, you are playing a little bit of a value game. Oh, interesting to get the plagiarize here with a very full hand, relatively speaking. I guess anything that he plays like justin plays is valuable i guess you're not really worried about burning anything you already have more grain in hand yeah i uh really i mean like the the worst burn here probably is like you burn your second vampiric blood or uh something along those lines so, like when your life steal cards yeah, he's got his second his second bank empirical blood in hand as well. So you're right that oh, basically everything in his hand is what he needs. <laughs> he's got the Astalor, he's got the Morgan. Maybe like ETC if he's playing it, and if it's got a good tech card. Yeah, ETC it if it's got like War Rider for the mirror. I think just ooh, that is I don't like that. <laughs> like taking that, I uh, think he's playing it. That frost yeah. breaker at all? I think he's just playing it because he has a sense of trying to fill his opponent's hand. Maybe I'm not sure. Because it's trash, well, basically. I mean, he that just played a temple play, card. Like, one more card. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, that was yeah, interesting. Yeah, but if you're gonna go for tempo, you're gonna go for the five draw. Yeah. <laughs> Gives him the what? the frost strike that right back. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I thought the rhyme sculptor love, was a little more interesting, art. but I guess I guess he Justin didn't really have a space in the curve to play that ever, so I don't know. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, this is lovely. I love it when this happens. Hearthstone is uh, crashing on me, so I'm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think yeah. we're gonna see yeah, coin more spectating. Here. Oh right, yeah. yeah. I assume at least. Yeah, here we go. Oh, Patchwork, actually. He's hunting for something. Hunting probably for the more grain from the opponent's hand. He did not get or it. Or the Astalor. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's probably hunting for the Astalor mainly, just because he knows that's in hand. But he actually also had a huge secondary target, which would have been the more grain. Um, missed on both, though, yeah. of course. <laughs> yeah. Now I think we'll see more grain come down. Always and never lucky. I mean, I guess more grain is probably not. It's not like, I mean, your opponent and chicken in this case has played one vampiric. It's not like the more grain. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know this matchup well enough to say for sure. Like, whether he should have coined which one. I do think obviously if he gets the Astalor, which he knows in his is in his, his opponent's hand, like that's certainly value. And then obviously it's also the first chance he has of sniping the war grade as well um, before he can be played. So it does kind of make sense to play this first, perhaps, and then, yeah, okay, you lose three damage to face. I mean, it is what it is, right? But yeah, th it does create this problem, which is that you can't get rid of the 7-7 seven -seven without and play your own. It was kind of what I was suggesting or thinking that Justin would do. He plays his own 7-7, seven -seven, 
you get that seven damage to face on top of the three damage, right? And you make it really awkward for your opponent to play their own more grain on seven. Got you. Yeah, because then you would just lose so much tempo off board, um, and you would take so much damage in the return. I don't like what Justin's thinking here of playing another Soul Stealer. I think it's just no muncher and ask the lower their face. Huh. I mean, like, Soul Stealer doesn't do much in the mirror unless they have a Banshee. Um, but even then, it's just, I don't know, really, yeah, that was interesting. really gross play, at least in my opinion. I, that was interesting. I feel like if I get a chance to talk to Justin, I would want to ask him about that. Just because I do agree, like, the no muncher and then just an Astalor to the face, like, seems reasonable. It also allows you to play the second Astalor on nine mana, so you can at least threaten. Like, you know, they have to fill the board because you have an eight mana um, Astalor on ten. But maybe he's trying to get more value from these no munchers, um, feeling like he needs to get more value, perhaps, from the no munchers, um, and not just have it die, you know, too easily or something along those lines. Yeah, maybe. Especially and because he is behind on life, right? So, yeah, like, he's yeah. not really able to pressure really with the eight eight on curve, you know. So maybe this makes more sense from that perspective. Yeah, I mean. That does make sense, but even then, I, I really, I just don't like that that play personally. <laughs> uh, it just doesn't sit right. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. I, I, it does feel uh, it's not the most intuitive play to just play an eight mana five five that eliminates your opponent's five five when you can do it more efficiently. Yeah, I mean, like between that and like you can save it for a board like this where you're just going face and you're playing your own soul stealer. You could have another Soul Stealer here and like clear another minion of theirs or another board right. of theirs. Yeah, maybe part of it is that he's not expecting um opponent to be playing Banshee, for example. Um, because I do agree. Like, I mean, he had two Soul Stealers. I think that's the other thought process. Obviously, he has the second one here. Yeah, I, I could kind of see that if that was the thought process behind it. I just, I don't know. <laughs> it seems very <laughs> strange to me. Um, I mean, and I think I think the play here is just face Soul Stealer and play Humaturge. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what the other lines are. There probably are some other ones looking for. I think the other no. lines here are just Humaturge first, look for Soul Stealer anyways, and play it. But that doesn't, that doesn't even work because it's a triple rune card. Right. Yeah, I don't think you can find it. Yeah, I, I was kind of thinking that he has a different way to do this, yeah. Yeah. I can... This play also... This play I, I like better than the other one, but uh, this one is... I mean, I think that you're the not problem with... You're not value out of the Hollow Hound, which I get, but... Right. I don't know. I think that the reason why this play makes a lot of sense is that you can gain a lot of life back, number one. Um, you got two attacks with your no muncher, not just one. And like you had a five you had basically a five drop and a two drop on board that were gonna just get eaten by your own stuff. So as long as you can find some alternative way to clear the board, um, you probably don't would prefer not to play the soul stealer there. Um, and so that line seemed pretty clean to me, but uh I do think like that was kind of born out of the fact that he used a soul stealer just to kill one five five, and so he probably doesn't want to play the second one either. Yeah, I can I can see that. Now that but it's... he did get a, a ton of value from the no muncher, um, and he pushed himself all the way back to an even life total when he was you know far behind. So I do think that's um, like given where the game has gone, like that was probably the line that made the most sense. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with you that it did make the most sense. It just just harkens back to the Soul Stealer miss, uh, in my opinion, misplay. Um, I don't know. Uh, now getting the Ash Lord down with your five armor mana thirst, uh, I really think that you should have gotten your Ash Lord down earlier. You did have opportunity to in one of your turns, but just uh, 
I guess, a, a difference in, I don't know, just the way of thinking about this this game. Yeah, and this matchup. Like, again, I'm not an expert on this matchup by no means, so it's hard to say what the quote-unquote correct line is. Uh, I do think it goes back to that whole coin 7-drop play, right? Like, coining yeah, Casper for sure. versus coining the 7-7. Seven seven. That put him back in terms of the life total. But it, obviously it was, like, a really good chance to... Like, if he gets rid of the Morgan completely, or if he gets the Astellar, like, both of those are, are important or valuable hits, certainly. And so, um, you know, maybe that roll of the dice is the correct play in this matchup. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I can I can see that too. Um, and then also this this board right here is Soul Stealer, of course. I don't know, everything just is cyclical at this point. It all comes back to the Soul Stealer. Um, but I definitely agree with you there that it uh yeah I don't know. Super Chicken is just really uh, starting to take this game away. Yeah, starting to put down the pressure. Definitely recognizing that he's in the driver's seat here. Just the way that the game has played out. But um, Justin does have removal for this. He does have three Blood Boils in hand, so if um, he does end up going wide, which is, again, another reason why potentially um, Justin opted not to take the Rhyme Sculpt. Although, I don't know, it's like the little two ones, they also do damage to random enemies. So so I don't know. I don't know if that uh, kind of negates the blood boil. But maybe that's a thought process as well as, oh, like, you know, this is bad against blood boil, potentially. Yeah. Um, I don't know how exactly blood boil will trigger. So, like, if you play all three on their board of the Rhyme Sculptors, if it triggers three times and then the death rattles trigger or if it triggers once death rattles trigger it triggers again i think each one is an independent trigger so if it okay. does two damage and is dead then the other ones won't trigger gotcha okay that does make sense but you know harshdown is a wonky game sometimes yeah for sure This Unholy Frenzy will hopefully work some wonders with the No Muncher um, if there's a minion that's bigger than six attack, essentially. Um, he can hopefully get some double value from this No Muncher. Yeah. Um, although I honestly think that most of the minions that are bigger than six have already gone. Right. Both Alexandra Smoke Grains are just off the board. So Yeah, they... it'd have to be a big screaming Banshee somehow, something like that. Yeah. Either that, or if they run the weapon in um, in Super Chicken's list, if he runs the weapon. But I honestly think that's one of the first things that Chicken would cut, is the weapon. So I don't right. think he's running it. This uh, is uh, very tough now. Um, Super Chicken able to find a lot of damage from Discovers. In particular, the Frost Strikes have been pretty valuable for him. Yeah, I think... I think here it's Obliterate and either No Muncher, Hero Power Swing into the 2-1, uh, or it's Obliterate the 5-6 and play your Astalor and hope you survive another turn. Yeah, we can look for something first to see if we can get anything. Hmm, yeah. Patchwork. I'd rather take the Bone Guard Commander here than the Patchwork. Yeah, a bunch there's, of taunts. There's no but... high priority targets here at this point. You're you're clearing their uh, five six with uh, a manual, no matter what. Here, I think the the patchwork is just to disrupt some value from your opponent. But you're right; like we are really far behind. It's just that there's a lot of clears that, um, you know, the one threes will basically get cleared pretty easily from most uh, in most situations. Yeah, I yeah, think that's do fair. you use that holy frenzy? That's why I was kind of wondering. No, I guess not. Okay. Had an opportunity to gain just because, just to gain yeah. extra five life, but decides not to. Corpse explosion here and missing this, lethal. Uh, some kind of lethal, not quite. Would have. Oh no, it wouldn't have been. Okay. It d depends on where so. one of your 
uh, Frosts would have hit. If so, he had played the Rhyme Sculptor first and then done Okay, the, we'll see how this interaction thing. works. Yeah. Because I'm actually not sure. So does it double? Maybe it does double oh, hit. it does. It does. Yeah, wow. okay, nice. Okay. Our stone is a one. That's huge. Hit. I knew it. It is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think Chicken is still very much in the driver's seat, but... Um, oh, for sure. One thing to note is that your opponent... I mean, he knows that here's an Astellar in hand, that he knows there's also, I guess, a Dissevered card. I don't yeah. know if he's not... Oh, wow, another play tries. He's not planning on playing the Dirty Rat yet, even though I guess he doesn't have a clean removal unless he plays um, the Soul Stealer. Yeah, and if you like Dirty Rat something like this now played Chill Fallen Baron, it's just not a good hit, <laughs> so... Uh, you wouldn't want a Soul Stealer that, although it is an optional clear after you've Dirty Ratted. Yeah. Um, okay, gonna draw a card, basically. Good. Ooh, that's, that's definitely something. Decent. Yeah. Um, it's just unfortunate that you're gonna give it to your opponent, though. Yeah, I mean, at this point, he doesn't know if it's Plagiarize or per, uh, per not Perjury. Um, cheat, no, Double Cross, right? Yeah, Double Cross. I think that's yeah. the other like potential um, secret that he could pick. Yeah. Oh, Either... Blood Boil is also good here, yeah. Yeah. And then do you save the hipster in case it's perjury? I mean, plagiarize? Yeah, I, th yeah. I think that you don't play the two mana, but he's going to find out it's plagiarized, which is not great, obviously. <laughs> Giving your opponent lots of value. Yeah, uh, especially with that Blood Boil. But at least you avoided giving them a hollow hound. Yeah. All right, goes true. for the patchwork now, gets the hound. Oof. I mean, there was worse, but. <laughs> yeah, but you, you really needed that for stabilization at this point. I mean, I think the Asplor is the way out here, um, for Justin, but it's not. It's, it's not going to get in though. Is the, right. is the unfortunate part here? Right. Though. Exactly. And you were really hoping to get the Hound to life steal something. Yeah, so that way you could ask the lore. Right. It's just right. unfortunate. Burning a card from his opponent. Yeah. Uh, Howling Bass does freeze the face. Yeah, and that's kind of what you need right now is to avoid more damage that you don't need to take. Um, I think it's just Howling Blast to go face. I think you play the weapon. You I don't think you can. I don't think you can. I th I don't think your opponent has lethal yet. Just by the way, he's been holding this swing forever. Yeah. I mean, you can make eventually make a life steal minion. <laughs> It'll probably be small, but you know. Yeah. Oh, uh, the rat's coming rat out. Coming down, Ooh. The Renifal, this is completely. Again. Yeah. If uh. If he had hit the patchwork, or even in the uh, high roll scenario, Astral here it would have been insane. But, yeah, but this hound is really nice and uh, yeah, a really nice yeah. clear. Yeah. Okay, gonna go ahead and use the weapon and go in because he's drawn his own Ripper, and his opponent is down to three. Oh, four. Sorry, can't do math. Okay, what's in the yeah. band? Is something relevant? Uh, we have to hope so, because otherwise lethal is set up for next turn, even if you clear the board. Yeah, he'd have to play Howling... Well, no, there's no way, actually. He'd have... There's no way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Howling Blast, yes, but he can't kill both minions. Yeah, unless ETC something or other. But... I guess you Howling Blast the minion, but you're still dead to hero power. You're just dead. Yeah. All right. All right. Time for Rogue versus Death Knight and see yeah. if Rogue can scan. Yeah. And uh, we know that there's a location in play um, that could disrupt things, assuming it is indeed a Miracle Rogue. Yeah. Uh, I would I would think it would be. I mean, you could it script would. a... Well, you know, it should be because he didn't play. He played the mirror there. Like, it didn't make... If it was Secret Rogue, he would have played it. So, yeah, so. so it should be Miracle. Well, I mean, I do think that the 
rubber band is on, so to speak. Basically, chicken gets two two cracks at maybe slightly unfavorables. Um, maybe uh, it's pretty close, but uh, Miracle Rook certainly, when played well, can beat Blood Death, Blood Death Knight and certainly can have an edge against um, Enraged Warrior as well. But it's not going to be a huge edge in either case. Yeah. Um, looking at the Mulligan here, I don't don't know if you keep the Shadow of Demise, but other than that, I think it's mostly a full keep here. For the rogue and for super chicken, I think you just drop the rightmost cards uh, or leftmost uh, for everyone else that's viewing. Rightmost being uh, etc and hollow hound. Maybe you even keep the hollow hound at this point, just for extra security. Yeah, um, potion belt definitely we want. Um, wow, the graveyard. So he's in business now. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that, that is a better hand. <laughs> uh, I just think Astalor is pretty important, though. Yeah, I think that you're you're always going to look for, especially in this matchup, you're probably going to just look for your really good early game cards, essentially. Astalor is just basically too slow. I think. Yeah, but I don't know. I think I think this is almost how you're supposed to play it, like a Control Priest Mirror. Not Mirror, but a Control Priest matchup for the Rogue. Where you're supposed to go heavy early game, run the matter removal, and then late game you have a whole bunch of Astalors that you're supposed to play back to back to back. Yeah, that's certainly one one possible road. Yeah, I still think that because your graveyards can win you a game, uh, you kind of have to just get them because if they're the bottom of your deck, you basically lose value from your deck, right? Yeah, uh, I can, I can see that. Yeah. The keep of the ETC for Super Chicken is interesting. I'm kind of curious what's in there, um, whether one of the location destruction cards are in there or what. Um, I guess we're going to find out because he's going to play it. Yep. Um, so some kind of tech card is in here. Yep, it's definition. a renovator. Yep. So I think that's a signal, like even the emote, but I would just assume, given that he hard runs one, that you play no matter what you play you hit the graveyard at the end of this turn yeah you would hit your own graveyard and maybe even play a second one although it's probably not uh, you would definitely draw first though which we do see there's definitely Getting a potential prep, Ooh, double prep really good yeah yeah this is real good this will be a big minion um Basically, the destroying the location is irrelevant at this point then. But you do have an Asphyxiate in your hand, which means that he's not going to care that much. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be massive, thinking, though. Yeah. But I don't know. I think taking the Shadow Step here is probably better than taking the Astalor. Um, although yeah, is, uh... Astalor is, is good. I just I think in this specific turn... I'd rather have a shadow step than Alright, he's going for both, which I'm yeah. definitely down with. Yeah, I'm a fan of this too. You want to do this as early as possible to make sure, or to hope, like he doesn't have a corpse explosion because he only has one corpse. And so this just becomes really difficult to remove. Yeah, um, and it really helps, especially with the uh, asphyxiate that is just now coming down. So, uh, yeah. So far, so good for Justin to scam the game, but uh, we'll see. And he's going to reload. Yep. Massive potential draw five. Oh, a neophyte. That's interesting. I don't know if that's relevant right now. It's uh, not a bad play. The Astalor makes you burn a card. I don't know if you care. At this point, um, you have a, a, a Shara in hand, you have a Krabatoa. I'm not sure what you're that sad about burning. You have the future side in hand. So... I still think you would you would save the Astalor. Uh, yeah, least. for like a Shadow Step or something. Well, you have well, the 5 yeah, drop to step too, hand. right? Yeah, That's true. Yeah, you're right. Oh. Oh, there's and a there's shadow, shadow Step. step. Yeah. So he's going to burn a card, but he opts to play the Ghostly Strikes instead. I think that that's reasonable given that you probably think that this cult neophyte has is going to have more value um later on when you establish a larger board perhaps yeah um but i don't see how he burns a card oh i'm sorry yeah he's at nine okay 
Yeah, I was just confused. Um, but also, I think you have to go in for the Astral game plan now, because you have nine cards left in deck, and you're really going to struggle in fatigue here. If you don't just outright beat uh, Super Chicken here. Um, so you, you would, I would have to think you have to go ask the war here or Krabatoa, um, just as a, as a fail safe at this point. I mean, one possible line. Yeah. Okay. I think Krabatoa is fine here. You're going to push a lot of damage. I was just thinking that one possible line could be trying to set up a cult neophyte turn, but you just don't have enough real gas and, um, Krabatoa just lines up so nicely. And you're basically pushing lethal. You don't want to go all in on this other location in case they do have some kind of clear. Um, but maybe a neophyte could make things more difficult. I don't know, actually. There's not that much that you're neophyting, really, to be honest. <laughs> I think... I think right here the play is to... Mm, I think it's just Corpse Explosion. But he goes for the would give you a clear yeah using your face yeah um but there's not much else you can really do here oh blood boil interesting yeah good hit i mean it's too off of lethal right now which yeah. means he's dead <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> And that is the rogue getting in. Let's see how we uh, progress with game five. Okay, so yeah. now we have the warrior against the rogue. Yeah. Another unfavored for the rogue, but we will see how it goes. Because uh, rogue did get in against the DK. So, you know, let's see... Uh, see who winds up winning this all down to this one game all right justin's uh just asking for a quick break so and chickens geared at him so all right on <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so this brings us to um game five between the lovely Rogue and the lovely warrior. So, any predictions on the outcome? And I know you mentioned the uh, warrior's favorite. But I gotta double check what HSR yeah. actually says. Well, uh, I, Miracle I, Rogue, I think, is actually favored. Is but it? Okay. It's very slight. I mean, this can definitely go either way. I honestly think that the rogue is gonna take this, uh, favored or not. Even if it was unfavored, I think the rogue still takes this. Like, uh, I just. I want to believe in the miracle that is Miracle Rogue. <laughs> yep, so it's Miracle Rogue was 55, or almost 56%, according to oh, VS wow. stats. Okay. Well, so, then, uh, oh, sorry, that's Menage, <laughs> Menagerie. So it's 50, 51, so it's slightly. Ah, well, even then, the, the warrior is unfavored, which is uh, incorrect for my, for, for my part. So my bad for... Uh, spreading misinformation <laughs> question is whether or not it was intentional <laughs> planned it's all scripted <laughs> we do a little intentional mis spreading of misinformation i can speak english did you know that <laughs> always good yeah <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Like, I I do think that a lot of this matchup is dependent, apparently, basically on Rogue draw, right? If uh, Rogue can get early pressure down, if Rogue is passing a bunch of turns, then uh, things can get out of hand pretty quick. Yeah, it's, uh, I definitely agree with you there. It's dependent on how good of an opener the Warrior has and how good of an opener the Rogue has in comparison. Basically, if Rogue has a better opener than the Warrior, when comparing the two, Rogue wins. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll see. But definitely, um, Justin has been playing Miracle Road for a very long time, so an expert pilot of it. So I'm sure he feels pretty comfortable. Yeah. 
do all right. So now he's back. So they'll be getting going shortly. We will, uh, I, I wonder, I wonder if he's running demolition renovator tech in his warrior too. <laughs> <laughs> that would be surprising. <laughs> yeah. And here we go. Favorite words in all of THL's game five. Yeah, game five. Uh, well, um, not that it matters that much, but Justin didn't show any cult neophyte tech, but I don't think that's going to matter much in this. I mean, maybe it on turn five, with... I guess. Yeah. For riffs, it... right? Yeah, exactly. Um, drop the shadow stuff. Drop the cult neophyte. Keep. Yeah, I don't even know if you keep the alchemist. I do think it's usually a keep, probably a keep in this matchup too. Just get a minion on board, but just depends on how aggressive you want to be, whether you want to look for the potion or the uh, graveyard. How hard you want to look for those. Yeah, I think, I think it's always just keep the ghoulish alchemist though. Uh, yeah, you get I think a, usually you, you do, get a body sure. and you can save the effect for later. I noticed that Chicken is still running the Nagatant, so that is a little bit interesting. Yeah, it's as well as Roaring uh, Applause as well. Yeah, the uh, the one five taunt is, I guess, unfortunate uh, for the rogue, like from the rogue's POV. This concoctor on one is nice, especially in this matchup. Give you a one two on the board, um, and then you. But we didn't get a very good concoction for the most part. Three damage is okay. Yeah. It's not terrible, but. Um, if we could draw some cards, that would have been better, especially with the Shadow of Demise and the Alchemist. So, okay, Tempo, Neophyte instead. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's... it's I agree with, like, from from seeing from, uh, like, both hands' perspective, I definitely think the Neophyte here is the play, but um, I, from Justin's point of view, I don't know if I was the pilot whether or not I would actually do that. There's going to be some disgusting turns, though. Like, um, yeah. right now, the Super Chicken is lined up pretty well. Okay, so he's going to try to kill this, which he can. So he's going to yeah, play this I... like a basic tempo matchup, essentially. Yeah, and I like that. I really do like this from Justin, uh, where you, you either wind up clearing their, uh, or not. You either wind up clearing both their eggs, or you clear one of them and get a little bit damage in phase. I think this is weapon. You're yeah. still trying to set up your turn. You you still have some potential here. You also have Brid Brid Bridge Rift if you want it, um, which is a pretty good coin play if you want. Yeah, and there's the potion belt coming for Justin. So the first one is going to get um, put with a three damage. Yeah, Draw two seems pretty good though. For sure, uh, I definitely agree with you on that front. Uh, don't don't know exactly what Justin really has to think about here. <laughs> um, another just, gleaming is probably fine. Yeah, either gleaming or slimy, but probably just gleaming. You want to draw through your deck as fast as you can. The nice thing is that he does have the legendary spell, so. If yeah. he really likes this deal three damage to draw two cards, he can copy it for later. Yep. Um, and depending on what you top deck here, if you get the other alchemist, no. Okay, but if you did, you could also reduce his cost to zero. Um, but the Sinstone Graveyard here is a big hit as well. Uh, so... now that now that we've got the Sinstone, I think we want to save the Door of Shadows. Yeah, I think the other reason is just we don't necessarily want to, depending on what our opponent does, we don't really want to overwrite this concoction. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that's fair. All right, coin bridge rift to get back onto the board. All right. Hmm. Um, I think we trade our face into the 3 4, prep the concoction, see what we draw. Oh, so you, you you would get rid of uh, you wouldn't play the concoction. I mean the mixed concoction then. Oh, you're right. We can't prep it. Wow. Okay, Yikes. so he's just trying to look for a one damage card. Yeah. Um. 
we get gone fishing. All right. It's Fine. Place. Still in play. We can find it a number of ways. Yeah. Uh, Does it have to be Astalor? I think it has to be Astalor in case you get your Dwarf Shadows to hit the uh, free damage spell. This is a pretty... Yeah, I think that's kind of a tough call, though. But, okay, he's not going to go for it. Um, it does still put this... I mean, even after the swing, this uh, minion will still have three life, which means it's killable. But he does have a buff right here, which is going to... And, oh my gosh. And the buff is going to... Oh, is he not going for it? Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. No, he. I thought that he was... He had jam session in his hand. He does not. Ah, Yeah. <laughs> okay. Damn okay. session is because the the uh, anima coming down. You have Craig's rush in hand, so that's just really nice to have. He's looking for the clear on the eight three. Wow. And he's really getting unlucky, I would say. Um, although yeah. there's only one more bone spike in the deck, so um, there's the ghastly strike you wanted last turn. But yeah, shadow step is fine because you can ask the lore step. Yeah, and that gives you the graveyard and the um, stenographer. So that's pretty nice, but you are going to end up charging up your opponent's um, crazy wretch. Obviously, he doesn't know that. Yeah, and I mean, it's not its not like it's a real, really bad target to... It's not, Oops. It's not a massive target for them to... He's going to get a full clear out of this, plus create a huge minion, and he's yeah. going to have um, the armor gain from two acid lars coming up in theory once he gets to turn eight at least yeah but we do have a disconnect it seems like yeah um i don't know if chicken has enough of a reload here this could be a pretty big minion here we're talking about what a 12 12 something like that um, maybe 13 13 Chicken? I don't. Uh, never no. mind. It's twelve, twelve. Yeah. Probably. It's gonna. So the chicken will have to find a way to get oh, to survive. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was looking at uh, chicken's crazed wretch and hen, and I was like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> well, taunts are valuable. Yeah, but they don't block that twelve damage. Right. You live one more turn. Actually, oh, okay, they, they now you have you have some combo potential. Yeah, there's that, and there's also I, I for whatever reason I didn't think that you can swing your face like you normally would be able to in Hearthstone uh, into the Astalor. So you can, or not. Oh wow! Um, right, you do get the taunt. Um. Oh, okay, yeah. So going for the buffs. Oh, but going for the buff on the taunt. All right. And saving some yeah. life here. It's very nice. Yeah, I think that was a clean play. Yeah, 6 5 is not the easiest to get out of. Um, Call me a fight. I think it's about, very little. I think it's, I think it's time uh, for Justin to either hit Potion Belt or Justin to hit the uh, Serrated Bone Spike off the door of Shadows at this point. There's only right. one card that he could get that isn't, and it would be the Ghostly Strike, but he's got it. He's got the Potion Belt. Ah, uh, got, got to kill the minion, so that's huge. Yeah, and even if he... Oh, wait, no, even if he... Yeah, you're right. I was thinking even if he didn't, uh, three damage, but he already uh, combined it, which is what I was worried about. But, uh, yeah looking like it might be game for uh chicken here and we uh we might get to interview justin you can always you, you can wind up asking him about the uh the play he made game two i think yeah well we'll see i mean he's got another potion belt in hand he's got the kravitoa he's putting counter lethal on the board yeah but um i think this is lethal Yep, with the... Wait, is it? Oh, no, no, no. Did he miss the buff? What do you mean? Um, oh, okay, okay. And then he break dances. Yeah. 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 Nice break dance is a card. <laughs> that it is.
one that uh, is rarely seen, but uh, it works. Justin's miracle play, too good. Yep. It's, uh, it's not so much of a... It, actually, no, with with the DK, it is a miracle. It is a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's favored, I think, in those matchups, but very slightly, at, at, the, at the highest level, at least. No, I'm saying, like, for the DK, Rogue into DK. Like... Yeah, Rogue is still favored against... Don't, don't, it's not favored against Control Freeze, but it's favored against even Blood DK at the, at the highest level of play. Not it's just, huh. it's just very slight, though. I didn't even know that. Yeah, it's like a 55-45. Huh. Wow. I honestly thought that Blood DK would be favored into that because of just... Um, Removal, right? You'd think so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but sometimes you also draw trash, so, you know. <laughs> True. We got, we got Justin joining us in a second here, so... All right. Depending on the the banter that goes between uh, Justin Hello. and Chicken. How you doing, Justin? Hello. I'm doing well. Good job. Was, Miracle Rogue. Face. I'm ever beating the super chicken in THA. Oh, nice. I was previously 0-4 against him. He was my nemesis. Except <laughs> I, against such a strong opponent, I truly needed a miracle. <laughs> well, good thing you got a miracle a couple times, right? Yeah. Yeah, last week there were two matches, and the playoff race was close, so we ended up being all the points we got. But first one, I got down 0-2, which was not good, but then I reverse swept with Miracle Rogue. Uh, and second one, I faced Bombi, who banned my rogue, and I just got stomped. So uh... <laughs> you're, <laughs> apparently, you're I've not been playing the game much well. That was not evident by my awful plays <laughs> on everything but rogue. But hey, um, uh, rogue one trick is getting there. Just get enough draws to, to execute. Don't tell people your secret. <laughs> just ban rogue <laughs> against you. That's a strat. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I game one, all the one ones look the same. How am I supposed to know one of them had rush? <laughs> <laughs> At least you See, noted. these are forces beyond my power of comprehension. It's a one one. It's textless. Are you supposed <laughs> to play around cleave with positioning? No, cleave doesn't exist. Hound, hound should not be a card. Let, let's be honest. <laughs> imagine, imagine positioning your minions game two so that the opponent doesn't clear maximum and heal maximum. Of course. Of course yeah. not. Never. Never mind. I, I, I game three. Okay, so I did have a question. Um, yeah. Blood Knight Mirror, right? You coined the patchwork uh, rather than the um, the Morgrain. What is the thought process there? Uh, I figured the matchup wouldn't come down to three damage, and he had the card kept in hand that he hadn't played yet, which was probably Morgrain, could have been patchwork, so I just figured chance to snipe that. It was, no, it wasn't very high. I figured like one in six or so. This is hand had like eight cards. One six sn chance to snipe and like instantly win was better than three damage. Uh, didn't really end up being that way because whatever, I didn't count that I only had six power on board. And if he slammed more grain, that would be a little awkward. So it was right. not really three damage. It was more like ten, 10 net. But yeah. like, you know, that was the decision that was made. Uh yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'd have to review that game. I definitely did not play it well, but it felt like I was playing from behind the whole game because he started with 20 extra health compared to me, which right. makes it difficult to overcome when both of you just have Morgrain on curve and it's always a Morgrain game. Like, if the Morgrains come down slightly later, sometimes he can get there via value, uh, which, I mean, he was outvaluing me too, but just because the Morgrain came down curve, I wasn't even trying to. Uh, yeah. 30 rat get fit, uh, sniping Finley was a bit annoying, though he admittedly missed on many of his other snipes, but given that my hand was lackluster, like I was planning the hand around <laughs> doing the Finley uh, to, to refresh for more healing, not like, wasting some of my resources just to get them out of hand because I was about to send them back to deck and then suddenly I couldn't. Right. Okay, no, you that, know, that, that makes sense. I made a 9-9 and a 10-10 on, on turn 4 as Rogue, beating out the Demolition Renovator by 1. <laughs> if you want to call a rogue, you have to run more than one demolition re renovator main deck. And you put one in ETC? Nah, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> he kept the card off the mulligan too, and I had such a good hand, so I'm like thinking, is there a way I can spend the mana to play around it? Because he hadn't played it yet, so it was like pretty high likelihood that it was renovator, but I'm like, no, right. I, I don't think so. Let me just play into it. Let me hope that. And you know what? It was renovator, but it turned slower, and it, it was a turn too slow. <laughs> right, yeah. 
Yeah, having both as well, and then the cards you drew off of the potion was like perfect, basically. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of things went perfect that game. <laughs> <laughs> Last game um, was super interesting too because like, yeah, it didn't start very well for me. Or maybe it started okay. Yeah, it was just like the well, last conceivable turn I could make a big minion before getting overwhelmed, given his right. draw. Yeah, his yeah. draw wasn't I, great. I mean, he does have double egg into axe into. He had <laughs> into a good hand, except like he needed. Rage. If he had like a jam session at one point, it would have been a blowout. But yeah, yeah. He like I was yeah. playing around the jam session, respecting it by killing off the eggs. But certainly, if he play, played it just turn two on the egg. I mean, if you play egg turn one on the play and you play GM session turn two, that's going to end a lot of games. But <laughs> right, yeah. Um, so I don't remember. I think it was game three. Uh, Demon Hunter versus no. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about Rogue versus Death Knight. What is your you thought process sorry. there? Um, <laughs> what's your thought process there going into that matchup with Rogue and DK? Is it similar uh, with like your uh, your control priest theories? Uh, like yeah, it, yeah. I mean, it's like it's an attrition like deck that's looking to play the control against you. It's it's pretty similar. Well, yeah, honestly, because they have the good single target removal for your big minions with light shell burn versus asphyxiate. Uh, I think it's a little easier than control priest because they can't. It, it t takes more mana for them to play their board clears, uh, and they have less healing slightly. Very slightly, uh, but yeah, I mean they're they're pretty similar matchups in that you normally go for Astalor late game or uh, just Blood Decay is a little more restricted in the plays that it can make. Like if you see their corpse count is low and it's before turn eight, then you can just really go all into board and there's not much of a punish to have. Where priests can still do priest things. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, on the HS replay, I think Miracle Rogue into priest is like forty percent, where it's like forty eight into DK, so it's like not that bad the matchup it's just the 52 percent of the time you lose you like really lose like <laughs> you go through every single card in the deck and they're still laughing at 35 <laughs> yeah yeah the losses feel um, bad that's true yeah I, I was i mean we both pretty much knew exactly what the other one was going to play dm dim red is those building lists of like yo should i even bother making a priest he's like you guessed i'm like oh wait i need to make one so that it says ban on it he's like yep <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, and we were both pretty clearly going with Blood Decay, uh, just right. given the opponent's uh, classes. So I don't think I built or played the Blood Decay all that well, but Rogue, I cut the POSIX from it for Breakdance to help me in that matchup, which yeah. didn't end up mattering there. It did help against the, the Warrior, though. Right, the Warrior. Uh, giving me lethal there, but yeah. Uh, Breakdance is a pretty good card in that matchup, just to have a way to... Step the Astalor while still leaving an 8-8 on board, so you're not right. dropping tempo. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, mm, it's still a good card. It's just like weird anti-synergy with the deck at times. It's like not good on stats. It's not awful, though. I just feel like it's a card I don't know how to play, because I'm not... <laughs> when, when you're sitting there turn three with, like, coin and Posix, do you coin out the Posix? Do you save coin for the pop-off turn? Like, you, you have a Posix and a Steno in hand. If you coin the Posix, the Steno's never hitting the board. But if you don't coin the POSIX, like, why is this card in your deck? I, I, I don't like the card. <laughs> it's not bad. I just don't like it. I don't play it well. Yeah, yeah I think sure. in Miracle Rogue, it definitely has uh, some weird weird roles, essentially, in the in the way that you play it. You'd have to be pretty aggressive yeah, in that yeah. role. Like, I, I love Tempo Kinging with Miracle Rogue when I just, just play the deck the wrong way and just completely ignore the pop-off game plan and just play all my cards down. But POSIX, somehow, it doesn't work in my brain how to align with that game plan. Who knows? <laughs> well congrats i mean obviously what you have decided to go with like worked out really well so that's always good yeah i mean i've submitted the same classes nearly every single week of this hero season it's been kind of funny <laughs> 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 i submitted the exact same decks exact same 120 cards every uh week of pro this season or i guess 130 one of them's xl but uh you know like why, why mess with it if it's working well i'd say that because I, I did start 04 and pro but like and i i still submitted the same two decks and one with them or same four <laughs> so you know but the day one lists in pro you just needed to juice them a bit they were at their strongest at the end of the expansion <laughs> after like five patches yeah <laughs> yeah uh but yeah congrats on the on the win again um 
I guess I should leave it to Saku to ask for any closing thoughts. No, I don't. I'm I'm all good as uh, as long as um, you guys are Did all. Did I have any? What was the worst play I made game three that you guys noticed? There were a lot of like really bad orders or bad decisions. I don't know. <laughs> I really was busy the whole game. The one that I thought the only I thought only the first game where you missed lethal obviously, but then but like I could kind of tell that oh like your your uh, how well you played the outcast DH like I just looked like oh it was a little bit shaky uh, in the first and second game to some degree, but uh, I think the blood oh, yeah. DK game it was just the lines you decided to take. But it made sense to me, at least on some level. But like the one we talked about a lot was the, uh, what was it? The oh, soul stealer. The, yeah, the soul stealer to to wipe the soul stealer. I, I kind of understood it because I think you wanted to get more value from your um, life steal since you were so far behind. But I just was dead and had three blood boils in my hand. I, I don't know how the game got to that point, but something something didn't go right there. <laughs> right. Yeah, for sure. So I kind of understood the lines you were taking, given what was happening in the game. But it just, it definitely looked very awkward at times. The the outcast DH was really bad, too. Game 2, I I actually drew the double Hawk Strider, double whatchamacallit opener, or exile. And, like, still could not find a way to use them efficiently. Yeah. It it didn't help that he had the answers. I may have lost anyways, but I definitely could have made it a little easier for myself, given myself more equity. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. I just got really dizzy there. <laughs> yeah, but overall, I thought. I mean, you played all the games really well. So. Yeah. Okay. The turn I went with double exile. I guess I could have gone in with just single, and then like milled a bunch of cards because I refilled too hard. I could have just like made the tempo, and then still had more plays after. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was weird. Certainly, him dr- top decking Hollow Hound tur- two turns in a row didn't help when I was like right. running late when we were doing right. the games. Yeah, that was uh, rough. No, no, I, I just baited it with my positioning. I, I, that that uh, dragged <laughs> Hollow Hand to the top. <laughs> it, it was threatened. It needed to come down. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a massively unfavored matchup too, right? So, yeah, yeah, it's like forty sixty, but that was like, or maybe thirty five, but that was like the thirty five. Like that was that was a credible hand, and he didn't have right. like the soul generation earlier to have the corpse explosion online early, and he had the stuff late. Of, Hollow Hound, Hollow Hound, whatever, Nether on a stick, etc. But mm-hmm. like, there's definitely a way I could have made a more annoying board because he was so constrained in his options with Blood Decay that like his capture cards don't work till certain turns either because of mana cost or corpse cost. Right. Weird. Yeah, people before were banning my DH. If they could start doing that again, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> there's a pro tip from Justin. So ban DH. We're good. Yeah, I've, I've just been, I've only been playing Priest and Rogue, and then, like, you know, when I only get to play one of them and the opponent brings a good deck to beat the other, it's a lot harder to win matches. It, it, it's really a tough life out here. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Perfect. Well, thanks again, Justin, for uh, for getting your, your match on stream, and uh, congrats on the win to get your team started this week. Thanks. Yeah. You got it. All right, any final words before we... Sign off for the evening there, Wild Nine or Righteous Jamies. Um, no, I'm good. Other good than, matches. As, yeah, other than all, as always, just like thanking everyone for watching and thanking the uh, the players for playing on stream and the casters for casting and the ops for opping. You know, like <laughs> other than you know the standard stuff, not much. The synergy is there. You're right. Yeah. People doing things that they're supposed to be doing. So. <laughs> exactly. So. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Um, We'll be back on Friday with a crap ton of matches. So we're going to have a trios match at 8 p.m. Eastern, um, starting with AFG versus uh, the L Gang. And then I have Wild Nine help me out with a match. uh, It's a pro series match with Chewy. Yes. On 9 p.m. Eastern. and then 10, 10 p.m. Eastern is going to be the second uh, trios match with uh, Swagoy and um, CMU. So the cheese cheese mongers united. So it'll be a action packed fun time. So stay tuned. Then I think you have something on Saturday, don't you, Wildman? Uh, I have at least one on match it. so far. Yeah. yeah, we have at least one match going on. So okay. yeah. 
yeah, so stay tuned to the uh, THL um, channel to see who's going to be on tap and will be watching. Um, I'm trying to think of the word. I'm almost asleep now. It's 1 a.m. my time, so. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so tune in, and we will see you soon. Take care.